What's good, YouTube? Sam here from The Brown Gent, and welcome to my new studio. It's still a work in progress, but today we're talking about one of the leaders in online sports betting, DraftKings, ticker DKNG. And yesterday morning, Hindenburg Research did them dirty with one of their infamous short reports. And this caused DraftKings stock to plummet in the early hours following the report before it recovered slightly. Now I picked up 20 shares in this company because like I always tell you, every reaction in the stock market is an overreaction. So exactly what was in the short report? Does it have any merit? And what do I see happening to DraftKings stock in the next few months? That's what we'll cover in this video. But before I do, everything I say in this video is my opinion, I'm not a financial advisor, and this isn't financial advice. And for those of you who have never heard of DraftKings, it's an American-based sports betting organization. They believe, like I do, that life is so much better with skin in the game. And for that reason, they are committed to responsibly creating the world's favorite games and betting experience. With money on the line, it's important to build the most trusted and customer-centric destination for skin in the game fans while developing the most entertaining real money products while transforming the way that people experience sports. Now DraftKings went public last year with SPAC Diamond Eagle acquisition, ticker DEAC, and was one of the few SPACs that didn't circle the toilet as a result of the correction that happened between March and May of this year. Although it did lose almost half of its value during this period of time. But since May, they've recovered about half of their losses before being hit with that short report yesterday morning. So let's cover that in a little more detail. The title of this report is pretty dark. A $21 billion SPAC betting that it can hide its black market operation. But before we go any further, just remember, this company puts out a short position in DraftKings and then publishes this report. So they're obviously biased and want to frame DraftKings in a negative light. These reports would be so much more meaningful if they were done by a nonpartisan group. Now the report is super long and I've linked it in the description below if you wanna take a look at it yourself. But in order to improve your viewing experience, I have broken down this short report into three themes. The first, is insiders cashing out of a lot of their shares. The second is DraftKings connection to money laundering and organized crime, as well as dealings in the black market. And finally, they believe that the major sports betting markets in which DraftKings competes are very competitive and that DraftKings doesn't have an edge. So let's address these one by one. So the first theme is insiders cashing out of their shares. Hello, is this the first time they've seen this? If it isn't obvious, IPOs are what make insiders rich. This isn't just DraftKings, but every company that goes public. And by their logic, they should go after every single company that's listed publicly in the last couple years. They'll have the same argument. Now the second theme is the so-called dark connection. And this involves a bunch of allegations around another company that they had acquired around the same time they went public. And this company is called SB Tech, and they had a technology platform that DraftKings wanted for its user base. And Hindenburg alleges that half of SB Tech's 2020 revenue came from black market or unregulated market sources. Basically, before it became part of DraftKings, they were kind of sketchy, and Hindenburg states that Shalom McKenzie, I hope I'm saying that name right, who was a previous owner of SB Tech, he spun off the sketchy business into a client that would pay SB Tech to use their platform. Now it's impossible for any of us to verify if this is true or not, but what I will say is that investors are buying DraftKings because they believe in DraftKings and for its revenue stream, not for the money that could be potentially coming from shady underhanded dealings that were going on with SB Tech. I for one had no idea this was even a thing until the short report, and if you're watching this and you have a position in DraftKings, you probably feel the same way. And if this is a real issue, management can easily purge those clients who are using the SB Tech platform that is now owned by DraftKings for these sketchy dealings. Now the final issue and the only one that I think could be a legitimate concern is they believe that DraftKings isn't competitive in this market. We just need to take a quick look at their latest earnings call where they earn $312 million of revenue, which is an increase of 253% from the previous period in 2020. 
Not only that, but they increased their fiscal year 2021 guidance by about $150 million, citing strong user activation and well-executed launches of online betting in Michigan and Virginia. Now, unfortunately, DraftKings is still not profitable and they spent somewhere around $183 million to earn this revenue and then another $228 million on sales and marketing and $168 million on general and administrative expenses in this quarter. Now, right now, DraftKings is live with online sports betting in 12 states that represent about a quarter of the U.S. population. And in 2021, 25 state legislators have introduced legislation to legalize mobile sports betting and five of which have introduced legislation to expand existing sports wagering framework. And on top of that, four states have introduced iGaming legislation and three states have introduced online poker legislation. Now in layman terms, the size of the pie is growing. So even if DraftKings proportion of the pie wasn't the biggest, they're going to see a lot of growth as more states come online with sports betting and iGaming. Now DraftKings is still a growth company and as such does not need to be profitable as of yet. But I do want to see these revenue numbers go up and the amount of money spent on marketing come down. This is probably the one line in the short report that I can get behind. Now, as far as the stock is concerned, as I mentioned, DraftKings took a tumble in the morning as a short report came out and it dropped as low as $44.95 and I sniped 20 shares in the mid 45s just because I believed it was an overcorrection. And I told people in the Discord and I think a few more people bought it as well. And if you want to check out our free Discord, I'll put the link to it on the screen right now. And DraftKings actually fought back and closed around $48, making me a small profit. But I'm really holding for a few months. This stock tends to do really well when football season starts, which is coming up in September. So I plan on selling it around then for about 60 bucks a share. And I don't think that we should take everything in Hindenburg's report seriously. They are incentivized by people selling out of DraftKings due to their short position. And I, for one, am happy that I was able to get into DraftKings for so cheap. But I'm hoping that management shows in later quarters of 2021 that they'll be able to start balancing off expenses by either reducing them or increasing their revenue substantially. Now, if you're looking for a good entry point in DraftKings, I think anywhere in the 40s is a decent price to pick up some shares. But you may want to wait until the inflationary update from Jerome Powell because the market tends to have a mini sell off right before. So I'll wrap it up here. I'm not a fan of long videos. Press all the buttons, like, subscribe and share this video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.